Hey guys, what's up? Caleb with Black Pearl Media here, and today I'm joined with Eric from Limmo Tuning, and he's gonna be helping talk to us and explain to us uh, everything there is to know about meth injection, because we're gonna be doing one on the rear mount 350Z, and I know nothing about this. He was nice enough to come by and help with an install and just like, you know, walk us through what's going on. So, Eric, why don't you tell us what meth injection even is and why you need it? What's up, everybody? So yeah, meth injection is, uh, it's a secondary fuel system for, uh, there's a lot of applications for it, but in this particular case, it's for octane boost. It helps, um, you can run just straight water in it, you can run straight methanol, there's other fuel types you can use for this application, mm -hmm. uh, for Caleb's application, because he does want to track the car. We're going to be using uh, boost juice or just it's 50 50 methanol it's nothing special yeah so tell them tell what you told me about like what so you can run methanol but it's extremely flammable yeah right? methanol is very flammable straight methanol m1 and m5 uh is uh, two of the variants yeah uh, m1 is what we mostly use for uh more higher horsepower cars that need the extra octane for people that don't have e85 near them or have uh, which bad, I do not. Right, which <laughs> I do not. I do not. <laughs> up in Maine, we have no E85 whatsoever. It kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, in Connecticut, there's two places. There's like here, maybe one or two places. Two yeah. places. And they're, I they're think far. there's a third going on uh, the Berlin Turnpike, but yeah, even that's still far. Away, far. Yeah. It's still far. <laughs> so this is just a good way to add uh, octane to a car with with uh, boost, and it doesn't even have to be boost. These also work in uh, and, uh, naturally aspirated applications too. This boosts your octane. So same thing if you run 93, uh, 87, uh, 110 octane. It's mm -hmm. all about resisting the explosion that happens in the combustion chamber. Uh, the lower octane you get, the easier it is to ignite. So if you have a bunch of cylinder sense. compression and you're making a lot of boost, uh, that can pre-ignite before the spark plug ever goes off, and that's called knock, where it just flash ignites itself. Uh, the more octane you have, the the harder it is to, re it, the more it resists to uh, the, ex the the detonation happening. Gotcha. So what you're, essentially what you're saying is like, there's, there's explosions going on at all times, yes. right? And we're yep. pouring more and more fuel into the cylinders, and you can get like pre, Ignition, pretty pre much. Yeah, pre so pre pre it's called knock. It's when it's the, no cylin good. the cylinder's coming up to 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 light, and because of the, all the heat in the cylinder and the issue that we had with yours, with yeah. which was the wrong spark plugs. Yes. Uh, the tip of the spark plug, because the whole point of so what heat range on a spark plug is is uh, the amount of heat that it can that the spark plug can expel out of itself into the cylinder yeah and into the head and yeah. out of the the spark plug because what was happening with yours is with boost and more cylinder pressure is the glow plug can actually or sorry the spark plug can actually turn into a glow plug Jeez. where it will sit red hot so it'll sit red hot it, and then when it fills it'll up ignite, it'll free it'll, it'll ah. ignite it before it ever gets to that so. This is all making sense to me because yeah, so you know, that's what the issue that we had with his that's why we couldn't turn it up a bunch yeah um, if you didn't see that video we made about 400 horsepower on this setup but it was missing a few things um the spark plugs were one of them i didn't have a step holder uh that went over my head I, I totally forgot to uh to get those installed um the intakes were a little too small and yep. we needed a second uh, uh wastegate so yeah we, we, we had some too. boost creep issues with the car um but not anything major but with the stock motor application you want good boost control you don't right. want to have because what we were having is we were having the boost spike really aggressively in the, in the beginning of the pull where the car makes the most torque and that's where you destroy motors that's where rods snap that's right so we want to avoid that, obviously. So, <laughs> so yeah, so he added a second wastegate so that we have more boost control. We'll be able to ramp boost in a little bit more progressively so it's just a little nicer on the motor. It'll still be fast, it'll still be crazy, but it'll be a little safer for the motor. And this thing's all right. We turned it down to, uh, I think, like 365 Three, think or like something like that. 370, yeah. something like that, something. yeah. And it's a blast at that power range. So we're hoping to get closer to 500. 500 is an easy number. Maybe oh, 550. Gosh, you know, crazy. we never know until we put on the dyno. Okay, so the microphone was not plugged in. Sorry about that, but it's plugged in now. So Eric's gonna go through 
the AAM kit, what it comes with, and why he likes this kit, and why we chose this. So, uh, Eric, why don't you just kind of go through the components and uh, let's so, educate some people. Yeah. So the reason I like the, the AAM ethanol kit is one, AAM is a very well-known company. They have a lot of uh, good products. You yourself have the boost gauge yep. and the, uh, the air fuel gauge. Yep. Um, the, met the AEM methanol kit has this, which is a progressive uh, controller. And if you look, it's got two different dials. And then those are the boost ranges. So this is when it starts mm -hmm. uh, adding the methanol. And yep. this is when it's full, you know, all the pump is uh, running. So you 100%. can adjust that on the fly pretty much if you needed to. But, if you needed to, but, but most part, once it's tuned, to. once it's tuned for however we set it up, keep it. It's, it's good to go. You never yeah. have to touch it. Perfect. Um, this is the methanol pump. Uh, this is a tank. Uh, they do make different tanks. This is the one and a half or the 1.1 gallon tank, uh, but they do make bigger ones. We have a customer with a yeah. four gallon one of these. It's massive. <laughs> this is my dog Jackson. Yeah, Jackson's always around, so he's a good boy. Uh, this in this kit, it normally only comes with one methanol uh, nozzle, uh, but because this is a Ooh. dual. <laughs> Sorry, guys, shaking up there. <laughs> Come here, Jackson. Um, because this is a dual intake system, we had uh, Caleb had to get the the secondary nozzle kit, right? Which is just another nozzle with a T and some extra line. Uh, you and get, if you're watching this and you have a DE, you don't need to get this. You don't need this. Yes, um, you just need the base H, kit. HRs have twin throttle bodies. If you didn't know, you probably didn't know, but if not, that's why you need it. Yep. Uh, so then you have all the the thing I also like about the AM and it comes with all of the wiring and it's a super long harness so you can cut it down to length you don't that way you don't have to add a bunch of splices in it and extend stuff it's just a lot nicer it's a lot cleaner yeah a lot cleaner yeah I like that. Uh, this is it comes with I think it's 15 feet of uh, this uh, this line and then that's an, an extra hardware bolts whatever yeah. else you need and some vacuum lines so that's why i like the methanol kit it really comes with just everything you need to install it the snow performance does have uh there's you know different stage kits and they do have a progressive system as well do they okay. their stage one is their cheaper option i think it's three or four hundred dollars yeah uh and it has just a spring-loaded switch yeah that's just on or off with the methanol yeah it works fine we've used it in several cars several high horsepower cars it works fine but Especially with autocross, having that on-off switch is not the greatest option. Yeah, because then it just comes right on. It comes right on. It's all the methanol, and it's 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 a little aggressive on stuff. The, yeah. the progressive controller, how we could set it up to progressively ramp the methanol in with boost is a lot easier on everything. Mm -hmm. But they do, and I, I just like AEM just because the company itself, they have good products. I've yep. never had one of these fail. I've used one in my car. I actually have one in my diesel truck. There you go. <laughs> So yeah, so it's a reputable company. That's what we're, we're going with here. Um, we're gonna be installing this right now. I don't know if we're gonna get through the full install. I'll film all that I can, but- um, We got most of it installed, I think. You know, uh, might not have all the wiring done, but- Yeah, definitely not. So Eric is here for a limited time. We have very limited time today. So we're gonna start the install and then he's actually gonna take the car back to main with him, back to limp mode. Um, so any other wiring or anything we need to finish up, we'll do there. Um, also but, because Caleb is scared to tow with his truck. I am scared to tow with my truck. If you, <laughs> my ball joints are completely, they're pretty much shot and the front tires will make you go deaf. But uh, yeah, and he's got, he's got that. Sorry for the creaking. But <laughs> <laughs> this thing is actually terrible with all the creaking in it, but oh well. WD-40. Yep, WD-40. So the first thing we're starting with, I have some brackets here and we're gonna mount the, the tank to the brackets. And we, we might need to the probably down. drill these a little bit higher up yep. and uh, go from there. there you, go. you know, you got to get yourself some thick brackets from Home Depot. You know, if you're not going to put your shelving up, tanks work just fine too. <laughs> <laughs> we will line the tank up. Yeah. There we go. You got enough? That worked it pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, not bad at all. That's like just enough clearance. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's what that looks like, and uh, we'll be able to get these bolted always, down. So we've had people that have mounted them to the the interior pieces, which is uh, okay I, too. I, but I those are guys that like drag race. Yeah. With autocrossing, there's too no. much going back and yeah, forth. Back a lot and forth. Of, and I think especially if this tank, 
What, what's funny is when the tank is full, it's not that bad. When it's half full and the fluid Slosh is sloshing tank, side yeah. to side, that's what could break. So we want to have a nice solid base. So let's go see what it looks like in the car. All right, guys. So I'm just hopping on the GoPro here just to get a little bit of a closer look on here. So we did install this with these two really large brackets. Uh, these are just L brackets I just got from uh, Home Depot you can get. And this thing is absolutely sturdy. Um, we could add more self-tappers. These are inch self-tappers. And then we got the pump here. It has an in and out. So make sure you're paying attention to those directions. And now we're gonna go ahead and run the lines. The lines just go straight in, they push in and they lock. To, uh, to release, you just press this uh, collar here and it will come out, but you push it in and it stays. So uh, you don't want any kinks, so keep it nice and straight. This part intimidates me, and if you're a normal guy like me, then this might intimidate you too. So Eric's so gonna show us some, some tips this here. one way to run it. Run it through the engine the engine harness. This is goes to the ECU. This yep. is the main engine harness. You usually have your engine cover here. You pop that off. It's like three clips. Then you feed this down through here. And it's nice and when you have like a second person to film too. You feel like you're always going to break them. Yep. Which they could, but you try and feel where the clips are. And there's multiple clips on these. Yep. So you try and pry up where the clips are so that you don't break them. They come off pretty easily. Perfect. This inside one, same thing. Pry on it. See, this just scares me. The whole thing just scares me. <laughs> but it's designed like that, so. Yeah, it's meant to come apart like that. Yep. And then for these, I actually pull this back, all this back. Yep. And I pull the carpet back. Oh, there's like little tabs There's little on. tabs. Yeah, yeah. So that you can see all oh, the other okay. thing. Oh, look at that. Is that fuel line I just saw? Nope, that's no, all. That? That's uh, windshield washer fluid. That's oh, for the okay. Rear windshield oh, fluid. right, right, right. I forgot about that because I deleted my windshield yep. over in the back a while ago. <laughs> and then I just run the line nice and neat down under here. All the way back. Perfect. I'm going to take my cell phone with the light and shine it right down the hole so I can see where it ends up. Okay, I'm going to film you from this side. You're just so beautiful. <laughs> I see it. Aha. Go to your left. Yo, nope. back right. Oh, oh, you're right there. Okay, hold on. There we go. See, there it is. See it. Aha. Once I can see what I'm doing, I'm good. Got it. Sweet. Uh, and that's the hardest part. Right. Now we're going to go ahead and mess with the wires a little bit. We got the controller here. And what Eric's saying, what we want to do is split the wires from what needs to go to the front of the car and what needs to go to the back of the car. Because we are going to mount this uh, in the back. I don't even know what you call that. The storage It's like area. a cubby. Yeah, yeah it's like a cubby, cubby area. Because generally, once you set these up, you don't have to touch them again. Right. So the wires that need to go to the back is the pump and the, the level sensors. Yep. So that is white, brown, and uh, pink and orange. So white and brown. So pink and orange. Perfect. It'd be really bad if we were colorblind, huh? Mm. Is it brown one? I think so. It looks gray. Uh, no, that's brown. They also have your uh, wiring diagram or wiring uh, list right on the back of the methanol yeah. controller too, which is kind of helpful. Those are going to go to the back. Okay. And then what's going to the front is the battery positive and battery negative. And these, these two, black and red, have to go directly to the battery. Do not th put them on a switch source. Okay. They have to go like right on the battery. They have to go right to the battery because this is the pump power and yeah. you want good pump power. If you don't, that's how you blow stuff up. Yep. Because, because methanol is a fuel additive, if your methanol stops working, it goes lean, guess what happens? Boom. No good. This is your trigger wire. This goes to a switch uh, accessory source. So you could hook it to uh, your cigarette lighter wiring, which is what I normally do, or yeah. You're gonna get to your accessory uh, circuit for the radio, mm -hmm. or if you get a fuse link, which plugs into the fuse box mm -hmm. and it uh, splits a uh, wire out, you can use that as well. Cool. So these three need to go up front. That is all the wires that we need for this particular installation. Okay. Now, there are two extra wires here. One is green and that is for the, uh, the optional uh, where is it? Green, green. Green, which is the boost switch. 
or the boost safe, sorry. That's the boost safe. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can wire this to, uh, if you have like an AEM ECU or other aftermarket or standalone ECUs, mm -hmm. you can wire this to the ECU and it'll basically uh, tell the ECU that, uh, hey, when this wire has voltage, do not let the car, do not let it go past 50% throttle or a certain RPM or some sort of limiter that the methanol system is not ready and it will not supply fuel additive when it needs it. Mm. Brown, like and white, brown and white. Brown and white. This is for a, uh, a solenoid for the methanol system. So in some applications, when you put your methanol directly in the intake manifold, the nozzle, you can actually have it, because it's pulling vacuum, it'll actually siphon methanol out of the tank. It'll wow. pull it through the whole system and it'll always be getting some methanol and you can have a misfire cause of that and other is issues. So this is for a solenoid wire there that will activate when this controller sees boost. Okay guys, so that's actually all the time we have for today. We got most of the install done, but there are just a couple more steps that I just wanted to talk to you guys about. While we have Eric here on the channel at our disposal, we can pick his brain a little bit more. He's gonna take the car back up to Maine. We're gonna be getting it tuned on the 22nd, so keep an eye out for that video. Um, it but would have been this upcoming weekend, but I have a bachelor party to go to. And I have I have my nephew's birthday party, so we got a lot of stuff going on. But anyway, so the next steps that we didn't cover on here would be the actual nozzles itself. Is that right? Yeah, so these are your actual nozzles. Yep. And these, uh, you can actually take them apart. There's this little piece right here. And there's a bunch of little pieces inside. Yep. I'm not going to do it right yeah, now. Yeah, don't do it right now. It's okay. Fly, fly, fly. <laughs> it's going to fly everywhere. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. But there's these little nozzles all the way at the tip. Yep. These little plastic guys. Yep. And they go in the tip, and these control uh, the levels. This is a CC, so it's just like a regular fuel injector. Yep. Where you have your 1,000 CC fuel injector. Same concept mm -hmm. for methanol. Yep. Um, with in, this, in Nissans, you obviously have your mass sensors. Yep. Can't get those wet. Right. Get those wet, they break. Yep. So these want to be above those yep um in it depends on the application we've had cars where they have metal intake manifold or the metal versions of these intake manifolds and we actually put them like right here yep. or on the side or somewhere but right for but these, not in this application we're gonna stick them as close as possible to right around here most likely okay and most people think that you need it to be like facing the throttle body that's not the case because there is airflow flowing through here yep and this is a mister it actually mists it right so it mists it this way and it sucks it in perfect so we'll probably put them right there and same thing on the other side, right? Uh, as similar as possible because you want to have want even. A, you want an even distribution, right? So that's going to be our next steps here. The uh, the black hose that we ran. This is pretty much, you know, where the the boost juice is going to come from. It's gonna. Uh, you're probably gonna what? Tee it off so or something like that. So what we'll do is we'll actually run it to back here, and then we'll yep. tee it off equal yep. length to both sides. That's perfect. So that way, that way, one's not getting more than the other, exactly. or it's not coming yeah, on at a wonky time frame. Yep. Yep. So. So that's really the the only next step we got. I mean, we got the, the running of the, do, the stuff. Oh, sorry. The running of the wires and stuff. Got to finish some of the wiring, and then we have to run a boost line from right. the manifold to the controller. And that just helps the controller read everything. Well, that's the boost. That's the boost sense for the perfect the sensor. Yeah, so that's what tells it, like, hey, it's time to time to go. Time, time to start to... adding boost yep. for methanol. Yep. yep. Perfect. So we're gonna load the car up. We'll get it on the trailer. I'll get a video of that and. Uh, uh, Eric, you'll see on the channel probably in the next uh, video or next two videos, and we'll be uh, hopefully shooting for five, five fifty on this bad boy. So really excited about it. I've never done this. <laughs> oh. It's easier to go back at back the yeah, there you go. Like back the door out a little bit. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> Our next trailer is gonna have a door there, but oh, 246 pounds. Army veteran. <laughs> oh. You got it. Here to go. Sweet. That's how you do it. <laughs> Alright guys, so it's loaded up. 
Eric, thank you so much for coming. We'll Absolutely. see you in a couple of weeks. We'll and uh, strap down and yeah, we'll get her strapped down and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Subscribe, comment, ask any questions. I, I got great access to Eric here. So any questions you have, I can pass on to him. Uh, he'll even comment in the comment section if Absolutely. need be. So, all right, see you guys in the next one.